Let's review section 15.4 and of chapter 4.8. We have a market for baseball cap. The price of $17 was determined between the interaction of consumers with firms supplying those. In this market, there are some consumers that were willing to pay more than $17 for a baseball cap. Maybe one of them was willing to pay $20, but ended up only paying $17. So this consumer has a surplus of $3 he or she didn't have to pay. At this market price of $17, we also had some firms that were willing to provide the baseball cap for a lower price, maybe $14. In the market, they see that they can sell it for $17. They were willing to accept only $14, and therefore producers here, the firm, has a surplus of $3. So let's highlight consumer surplus and producer surplus. Consumer surplus would be anything above the price line and below the demand curve. So for example, for this one consumer here was willing to pay 20, end up only paying 17, that's a surplus of $3. Maybe we've got a consumer here that was willing to pay $22, pay 17, that's a surplus of five. So if you keep adding up those heights here, then you end up having this triangle here. That's what we call consumer surplus. Now over here, if we want to derive producer surplus, you had this one firm that was willing to accept only $14, end up getting $17 because this is a market price for those baseball cap. So that's a surplus of three. You even had a firm somewhere here that was willing to accept a lower price. Maybe a firm here that is willing to accept a price of 16. The surplus is a dollar here, slightly more here. So then the overall surplus here for producers is everything below the price line and above the supply curve. We call this producer surplus. Now, let's imagine that there's a rule that says you cannot charge more than $14 for the baseball cap. Now, all of those firms here that were willing to sell it for a lower price than $17, they're refusing to sell it for, for that price of $14. They were okay selling it maybe for $15, for $16, but not $14. And therefore, you will have a drop in the quantity of baseball caps that firms are willing to sell at this lower price. Only those firms here on this supply curve are willing to sell it for that price or less. So now only that many baseball hat will be sold. And then if you look at who's going to get those baseball cap, only those consumers that are willing to pay, that were willing to pay a much higher price than the 14 for sure. So here, those firms are not supplying those baseball hats, and all those consumers here, they cannot buy those extra hats. So only this much gets to be produced and bought by those consumers. So when you look at this area here, that's the loss associated with saying less baseball cap. Okay? So here, the dark pick triangle here and the dark green triangle here, that's what we call loss to society, loss to consumers, loss to producers, and therefore this big dark blue triangle here, we call it deadweight loss to society because we are selling less baseball caps, consumers are not getting those, and we can actually calculate this deadweight loss by deriving the height of this triangle here or the base and the height here. So here, that side of that triangle here is 20 minus 14, okay, which is $6. And then here, this height here, we, we would need to know the value here. Maybe, I don't know, I'm making it up. Maybe it's 15. So you've got six here, and then you've got five units here. And therefore, to calculate that triangle, a triangle is always half of a rectangle side by side. So the area here will be equal to the 
one half times the height six times the base. That will be your deadweight loss in do in dollars. So here we have a market where many firms are competing to sell baseball caps. But let's say that now only one firm can provide those baseball caps for one of the team. So the market supply curve becomes the firm supply curve. So when you look at this supply line here, that becomes the firm supply curve. And as you've seen from a previous chapter, this is often given by the marginal cost function. So instead of having the market supply curve here, the supply curve by that one firm can be derived from its marginal cost function. So the outcome here, the equilibrium of $17 and a quantity of 20 is given by the interaction between the demand and the supply by this one firm now that we've got from it, that, it, that the supply curve that was derived from its marginal cost function. So this is this equilibrium here that we call C for competitive equilibrium could be the same here uh, for that one firm. So here below, I drew a similar graph where we assume that only one firm gets to sell those baseball caps for that team. So that firm has some monopoly power and the supply function of the firm is derived by its marginal cost function. The competitive outcome, we don't have that now since we have only one firm, but if the firm were, was forced to sell it at the competitive price, it will be where demand met supply at point C. But the firm has monopoly power now. It's the only one who can sell this baseball cap and therefore to maximize profit, we need to find the level of output here that will maximize profit. It is where marginal revenue equals marginal cost when the marginal revenue function intersects the marginal cost function here at this point. At this point, we then derive that the quantity of output that will maximize the profit of that firm that's got monopoly power, it's QM equal 15 when MC equal M or equal $10. And then the price that the firm will charge will be this price here, PM equal 20 at point M here. Okay? So as a result of this, if we want to compare those two outcomes here, the competitive outcome and the outcome where the firm has monopoly power, we see that output here has dropped from 20 units to 15 units, and the price has gone up, gone up from $17 to $20. So what was consumer surplus before? And what is consumer surplus after when the firm has monopoly power? And let's do the same on the producer side. So before consumer surplus was everything below the demand curve and above the price line. So consumer surplus was this much. And producer surplus was everything below the price line and above the supply curve. This sort of a triangle here. That was producer surplus. What is the new consumer surplus? Well, now everyone has to pay a premium here. Instead of 17, we pay 20 because only one firm is supplying those baseball cap. So consumer surplus is everything above the price line and below the demand curve. So this is the new consumer surplus. And as you can see, all of those consumers here are no longer willing to pay $20. They were only willing to pay less than 20, anything between 17 and 20. So consumer surplus has shrunk. And there's been a transfer of surplus from consumers to producers because the new producer surplus is everything below the price line, the new price of 20 and above the supply curve. But as you can see now, we are selling less, 15 instead of 20. So this is the new producer surplus. Okay. And as you can see, we are producing less output at a higher price, and therefore we've got a dead weight. The price used to be $17, now the price is $20. At this higher price, all of those consumers are not willing to consume, 
and purchase those baseball caps. So there will be a dead weight loss. And the dead weight loss is the result of less cap being produced, 15 instead of 20. So if we were to calculate the dead weight loss, we've lost all those consumers here. And also we've lost uh, producers who are no longer able to sell those caps. So if we were to calculate this triangle here, again, a triangle is half of a rectangle side which is this height here of 20 minus 10, that's 10, times the base here, the other side of that rectangle, it's 20 minus 15, which is 5. So we get half of this to get the triangle, and we get $25. That's the deadweight loss associated with this firm having some monopoly power.